working pretty hard behind the scenes of turning rust to try to build up a collection around here at the shop. And we've got a pretty cool collection that we'd like to share with y'all. Got a lot of cool old cab over trucks, some short school buses, some old metro vans. Just a lot of neat stuff that we wanted to share with y'all. Uh, a lot of it's for sale. If you're interested, just you know, leave a comment in the, in the comments below and we'll get back with you and let you know where we're at on everything. This is a 1941 Ford cab over engine truck. It's a really cool truck. Uh, I actually had a buddy find this uh, pretty local around here. He, he called me up and asked if I was interested. Of course I was. Uh, it looks like it was an old wrecker truck. It's got a really neat uh, old wrecker style bed on it. Still has the old winch and everything in it. Uh, it's a complete truck. It has an original flathead V8 in it. Uh, we're not really sure about the condition of the motor. We haven't really messed with it to see if we can get it running or not or anything. But I love this old truck. I love the look of this snub nose that these things have. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a really cool project. This is a 1956 Ford cab over engine truck. Uh, you may remember it in the, in the first episode, we talked to Mason and Jefferson and he actually led us on this truck to, to find this truck. Uh, we ended up working a deal and buying the truck off of him. We got it home. We were actually able to get this old thing running and everything. Uh, it was also maybe used for towing stuff. It's got a huge fifth wheel hitch on the back of it and got a winch as well. Uh, but uh, it's got really cool colors on this truck and, and also it'd just be a really cool rat rod, make a neat car hauler for somebody. This is a 1955 Chevrolet short school bus. Uh, it's a really short one. It's only about 17 foot long. It only has three windows down the side, which is really cool. I, I love the short school buses. You see a lot of the medium ones and the full size ones. Uh, but uh, this one, I love this front end. Uh, they didn't actually have a motor or transmission in the thing when we got it. Uh, the inside's pretty much gutted. On a lot of these things, they made them into old RVs back in, at some point in their life. Uh, but these things look awesome, slammed to the ground. This one doesn't have the greatest patina, but as you know, we can even paint patina to make it look cool. Uh, but a lot of people are making food trucks, just all kinds of deals on these things. This is a 1960 International Metro van. Uh, it's one of the really short ones. They actually made these in three different sizes, and this is the shortest one of all three of them. Um, they have, once again, they had somehow made this into an RV back at one point in its life, but it has the original drivetrain in it. We were able to get it running. It's an old straight six cylinder, uh, but this thing actually runs and drives. It's got a little rust on it. We do have the grill for it, but it's got a super cool patina to it. It's like I said, it's one of the short ones. These things also look super cool, just slammed to the ground and you're making a street rod out of them. This is a 1960 Ford uh, airport rescue vehicle. Uh, it's actually got a really neat style aluminum box body on it. Uh, it has a V8 in it that actually runs a 265, I believe it is, uh, not for certain, but it's got the, they got the winch up front here. Like I said, it's four wheel drive, uh, super big vehicle. Uh, I don't really know what you could use it for, but it's very different, very unique, and uh, would, would get a lot of attention for somebody. This is a 1949 uh, Ford Postal vehicle. Uh, really neat, you don't see a whole lot of them. Uh, this thing is very good shape on the body. Just the doors have a little rust where they were made of some thin metal. Uh, but this thing has an old uh, six cylinder in it, flathead six cylinder. This thing actually was, we were able to get this thing running and driving. The motor was locked up on it at first, but uh, she runs and drives now. Got a really cool patina to it. Uh, pretty much you just, you're open to anything on building these things. It's got a big open spot in the back. You can make it whatever you want, food truck, uh, just whatever, you, a coffee truck, just all kinds of stuff on the options on this thing. Uh, but overall, this is a, this is a pretty cool truck that, that also get a lot of attention. This is a 1960 International Metro van as well. Uh, this is one of the medium length ones. Uh, it has, it's complete, it has the original motor and transmission in it. Haven't really messed with this one yet. We haven't had it too long to actually see if it runs and drives. Uh, this one's got a really cool patina. If you notice on the doors, they've got a lot of paint left on them. You can obviously tell that this thing set with the doors open and uh, you know they were protected from the sunlight and mother nature of just tearing down this old paint. Uh, the only downside on this one, someone had put some windows in the side of it at one point in time. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's something somebody else did. And, but it could be an easy fix just with some sheet metal or a lot of times people actually cut these things out to let them open up to the side where you can access to people selling you know, merchandise out of it or, or whatever you may be using it for. This is an early 1948 International Metro van. Uh, I really love this body style. It's got a unique uh, longer grill on it than the other Metro vans we have. Uh, this is also one of the real short ones. Um, it's kind of got a cool patina to it. I plan on really throwing some cool logos on it. 
Uh, this one is was an old uh, flathead six cylinder in it. We were able to get it running as well. It runs and drives, uh, you know, no brakes or anything like that, but you are able to move it around and everything. I actually found this thing over in Oklahoma, uh, but these things are all over the place and you just kinda, kinda gotta look for them and, and see if you can find them. This is a 1951 Chevy cab over engine truck. I uh, really like this truck. Someone's actually already put it on a newer style dually frame. Uh, it's got a half ton bed on it, long bed on the truck. Uh, it would make a super cool hauler for somebody to haul around your trailer with. It uh, doesn't have a motor or anything in it right now. We plan on putting a 12 valve Cummins in it. And uh, I really kind of hope to hang on to this truck and keep it around because it's just so unique and different and uh, just be a fun truck to have. This is a 1953 GMC short school bus. Uh, this was actually the very first bus that we ever bought, uh, kind of back when Craven Customs got started. Uh, I looked, I wanted a bus, looked for a bus and found this one. And this has been the favorite one I've had so far. Uh, it's a real short one, only about 17 foot long. This one actually only has two windows down the side, which is pretty rare in itself. Uh, but I got a lot of big plans to build this thing out on the future and uh, just keep, keep watching and maybe you'll see it get done. This is a 1956 Dodge Postal Van. Uh, you really don't see a whole lot of these. Uh, uh, there is a guy, I think in Georgia, that's built one that's getting a lot of attention right now. Uh, but I found this thing actually in Texas and I, I really love it. It's just got a real cartoon look to it, the real snub nosed and everything. Uh, it's got the original drivetrain in it. It's not running, just an old flathead six cylinder. Uh, but the body's in really good shape. It's, it's not much rust at all for the age and, and, and compared to most vehicles of this time. Uh, but once again, this thing would be awesome just slammed on the ground with a LS motor or whatever you wanted to do to it. I mean, the, the options are just endless on this thing. This is a 1941 Chevrolet short school bus. Uh, I really haven't found many of these old short school buses this old. And when I come across this one, I, I was really happy to be able to buy it. Uh, the body's actually really solid on it. The, the doors were a little rusty on it, but it's got all the original motor and stuff in it. Uh, not very long, only about 19, 20 foot long overall. Uh, be super cool thing just to build, you know. Once again, I say everything slammed to the ground, but it, it makes everything look so much better. This is another 1954 International Metro van. Uh, we actually recently just purchased this van and you may actually, it may actually show up on a future episode of Turning Rust. Uh, but the guy contacted us, it was super local. Uh, he had just dug it out of the weeds and we, we got it here. Uh, it, it's, it's got a bad motor in it, but it's a, it's a pretty cool, a very solid Metro. Uh, for someone that's looking to build a Metro, sheet metal wise, you're not gonna find one much better than this. So we tried to show you a lot of the inventory we have here at Turn and Rust. Uh, we, we mainly focused on the bigger vehicles that we have right now, but we actually have a whole lot more vehicles of the smaller half-ton style trucks and cars. Uh, a lot of unique stuff that will show up on the show. Uh, but if y'all are interested in seeing more, uh, we're interested in making another video to actually show what all we do have here. Uh, but for right now, we just wanted to like touch base with y'all and just show y'all the bigger unique stuff that kind of got Turn and Rust started.